The following program is sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life. So I want to dispel something that a lot of people think is true. Yeah, man, you know what? I don't need Jesus. I'm going to party with my friends. We're going to be in hell. And we'll read like magazines and we'll drink from time to time and tell dirty jokes. That's what we'll do. No, you won't. No, you won't, because the Bible says it's a place that you're fully, absolutely alone. Today on Real Life, Jack Hibbs turns up the heat in the message, The Reality of Hell. Life is short, and that often makes us question, what happens after I die? What is waiting for me on the other side? If you've ever wondered, is heaven really real? Then Dr. Randy Alcorn's book, Heaven, has the answers you're looking for. Biblically sound and easy to understand, it will open your eyes to see your future home in an exciting new way. With these real life questions, his insights will challenge your thinking as he looks at such topics as, what will I be doing in heaven? Won't it get boring after a while? What will I eat in there? Are there animals in heaven? And what will it be like to see God? Randy Alcorn breaks it all down in easy to read, simple and understandable terms. Order now your copy of Heaven for a gift of any amount. Go to jackhibbs.com and all the information is right there or call 877-777-2346. Heaven, make sure it's your eternal destination. Then discover what God has in store for you. Heaven. The question is, are you going there? That's the major, major question of life. That should be what's on the thought, mind, lips of everybody regarding heaven. We invest so much in this world, but the question is, are you going to heaven, right? Jesus said this world's not going to last forever, but heaven will last forever. And that's based upon the words of Jesus Christ himself. Well, listen, we're looking at the historical arguments regarding heaven. We're looking at the archaeological evidence regarding heaven. And we're looking at the eschatological, that is the prophetic argument regarding heaven. All of these from the Bible. And today we're going to be looking at the ontological argument. What is the reasonable argument that God has given us regarding heaven? Well, listen, we're going to get into this study any moment. But before we do, I want to remind you of this tremendously epic book written by Randy Alcorn. It's called Heaven, and I promise you this, you can throw away any other book you own about heaven because this one is based upon pure Bible. What does the Bible say about heaven? What will the aspects of heaven be like or the characteristics of heaven? This book is gonna walk you through a systematic understanding regarding the theology of heaven. And again, if you get this book, and if it's not a blessing to you, we'll send back your money. Send us the book back we'll send you your money back. That's how much I believe in the accuracy and the worthiness of this excellent book. But for now, let's get into what the Bible says about heaven. The law of the Lord is perfect. The testimony of the Lord is sure. The statutes of the Lord are right. The commandment of the Lord is pure. The fear of the Lord is clean. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous. This is what the Bible says about itself. Ask yourself, anyone who inclines themselves, puts themselves to study God's word, if there's not a radical moral effect that changes it. I'm not talking about becoming a theologian. We're not interested in more theologians. We want disciples. Don't pontificate about what it means if you're not going to do it. If you're going to study it, God expects us to live it, right? 
So, watch this. How does these truths affect me? Again, Psalm 19, watch. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. That's how your soul's converted. It's the law of the Lord. It is perfect. And what does it do? It convicts me that I'm a sinner and I need to be changed. Today, if you cannot agree with that first statement of verse 7, you've got serious eternal problems, friend. You're telling God that he doesn't know he's talking about. That first statement in verse 7 is the Lord saying, you need me very badly. I will live on forever, I'm God. You need my salvation. And that's your first challenge. Second challenge is, listen to this, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Making wise the dumb. Making wise the person who doesn't know. This is an amazing thing. Wisdom is spectacular. You can be a genius. You could have graduated from MIT or Stanford. You could, be, you could be a Harvard whatsoever, you know? You're smart. You know what that means? It means you're smart. You can make the dumbest decisions in life. I know some people like this. I hope they're not watching right now. It just dawned on me as soon as it came out. Whoops. But you can have all these degrees and you can have all of the theories and stuff. And get up and walk right through a a glass window. I didn't see that. You should open your eyes when you walk. Yeah. Listen, wisdom is the application of knowledge. That's what wisdom is. Wisdom is knowing how to use knowledge. Listen, God says in James, I will give every one of my children wisdom if they ask me for it. So ask. Isn't that amazing? You can be brilliant on paper and not be very wise. You'd much rather have wisdom. Thirdly, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Does not the world need a rejoicing heart in these days? Happy New Year! COVID round two! There's something worse than sickness, friends. And that's losing your heart and your mind to depression. Wow. You know what? We need some rejoicing of the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Isn't that, that even sounds good. It sounds like you're going to a doctor, go down to Newport Beach. I'd like to have my eyes enlightened. <laughs> right? What would you like? My eyes enlightened. Can't do it with a blade, though. There's no tuck and, tuck and roll for that one. It's a matter of, of the countenance of your soul. To have your eyes enlightened <laughs> is to realize, hey, wait a minute. Uh, I belong to God. This whole universe belongs to him. I don't know what's happening. I don't need to know. I trust him. Yeah. So what kind of, and people, when you do that, your, your neighbors and friends will go, what are you nuts? <laughs> what do you want me to do? I want you to be miserable like me. <laughs> I want you to get down and grovel in your terror. I want you to be, so no, no, you know what? I just read the Bible, went to church today, and the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Wow, God's amazing. I'm going to go with him. Verse 9 says, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. I'm going to be on his side. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous. There's one thing we know for sure. Nothing else is true and righteous but God. Number two, as we come to this today, heaven, will you be going there? The fact that there's in hell is the absence of heaven. What makes hell, hell? A lot of things, but one of them is the absence of heaven. Jesus told us and spoke to us about heaven and hell in Matthew 25, verse 41. By the way, Matthew 25, 41, you may find it interesting to know that Jesus spoke about hell more than any other person in the Bible. 
and given what he did at the cross to keep people from going there, makes sense to me. He doesn't want you to go there, so don't go there. He says, then he will also say to those on his left hand, this is the day of judgment, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Did you know that? That hell was made for Satan and his minions, not for humans. This presupposes, by the way, that hell was created before Adam and Eve were created. We don't know when it was created, but we know it was after the fall of Lucifer, but before the arrival of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God made hell for Satan and his fallen angels to be confined there in eternity. You say, well, then why would humans go there? That's a great question. Why? Why go there? The Bible is very simple in this because, quite frankly, we are disciples of the flesh, the world, and the devil, it says in 1 John. Without Christ in our lives, we will do what the world tells us to do. We will do what we want to do. We will do what we desire. We'll follow people. The enemy of our souls will influence us or we'll make our own decisions. And unless Christ is involved in your life. That's the path that you're on right now in the hearing of my voice. That's the path that you're on. You're, you're waiting right now for church to be over so you can go out and do your, the, the, that thing that God is maybe saying to you, yeah, I don't think you should do that. You shouldn't be doing that. You say, man, that's, that's so unloving. Oh, my friend, if you think that's unloving, you don't even know what love is. If you tell your kid, don't play on the freeway, you're going to get hurt. Oh, man, don't, don't, don't fence me in. <laughs> Really? You seen those parents where the kid, the kid's about this big, and uh, the kid goes, the, the kid goes, I want that, and the parent goes, No, you can't have it. Ah! Okay, okay, you can have it. You seen that happen? Man, those kids have got those parents trained really well. We do that in life. I want this. I want that. Listen, unless Jesus rescues you from you, you are going to pull yourself down into a pit that you ought not to have gone to. It's all on you. It's not on him. Hell is where there's no love. We, don't even, we can't even fathom that. The ugliest, meanest, wickedest person in the world right now is still benefiting from the love of God in this world. Think of it. Hell is where there's no love. And I'm talking real, I'm talking God's love here. There's no, no love. There's no light. You say, wait a minute, what? No, no, there's no light. Did you know that? How are you with the dark? I'm not talking about a dark room. Years ago, maybe you've been, you can go to the Oregon Caves in Oregon. You go in there, and they take you deep inside the cave, and they take you into the, uh, the Grand Auditorium, I think they call it. It's all natural. It's huge. And then the National Park Ranger gets you all in there, and then he turns off the lights. And at first, everybody goes, oh, oh wow, it's dark. <laughs> and then this, this is what happens. It's really dark. Yeah, it's dark. And then you hear, Mommy, hold my hand. No, really. And then you hear, Honey, hold my hand. (laughs) And the ranger's talking about light and particles. And the longer you're in there, the quieter it gets. And he said, you know, when we discovered these caves, we found corpses in this cave, in these caves. Because people from whatever time would run into the cave or seek shelter, get lost. They could never find their way out because it was too dark. I know. It's a darkness that can be felt. The park ranger will tell you on that tour that if you are lost inside here, you'll probably go insane within a matter of days. Did you know that heart, uh, hyper heartbeat respiratory 
you begin to panic and hyperventilate and it's as though you're in this big spacious room and it's as though you're being suffocated because the darkness starts to crush you and it's all in your mind. And the Bible says that hell is dark and no light. There's no love, there's no light, there's no life. I didn't say there weren't living people there. I said there's no life. The Bible is very clear that those who are in hell are very, very much living, but they have no life. So I want to dispel something that a lot of people think is true. Yeah, man, you know what? I don't need Jesus. I'm going to party with my friends. We'll be in hell, and we'll read like magazines, and we'll drink from time to time, and tell dirty jokes. That's what we'll do. No, you won't. No, you won't, because the Bible says it's a place that you're fully, absolutely alone. None of your friends will be there. Well, they may be there. You'll have no knowledge of them being there. The Bible says you are forever falling. You know that feeling? Some people like it. I don't think so. When you add on the rest of the attributes of hell. The Bible says you're on fire. So wait a minute. If you're on fire, there's got to be some light. (laughs) No, there's no light, but you're on fire. You're burning. The Bible says that you're also in the lake of fire, yet no light, but always on the brink of drowning. The Bible says, Jesus said, it's where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Look, I don't know about you, but I think I'd listen. You know, to what Jesus says about it? You know how stupid your opinion would be right now about what you think hell is like? That God would come and die on the cross so you wouldn't have to go there? Jesus says it's a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know what gnashing of teeth means? It means that you move your teeth back and forth until they break. You know, some people in our culture today... There's, you wear bite splints created by your dentist to keep you from breaking your teeth. Did you know that you crack your teeth from stress? You're not going to have a bite splint in hell. Jesus said it's a place where the worm, he's talking about the worm of the grave constantly gnaws on you. Can you imagine just trying to get something away and you're falling and it's pitch black and you feel like you're burning and there's nobody there to comfort you This is why Jesus came. You're not going to hear this. Listen, this is not how you grow a church, giving messages like this. This is called negative church growth tactics. (laughs) Um, But he doesn't want you there. He wants you with him in heaven. And so I'm I'm going to give you this, and I'm not joking. I know it sounds funny, but I, I, I did this ending because it's, you can relate to it. The entrance into heaven What about it? Very quickly. uh, There's limited seating available. You say, come on, quit joking around. Some woman heard second service. She called the church. She's all bent out of shape because she thought I said heaven is limited. Like, well, you put it in your pocket. You put it on the shelf. That's heaven. That's not what I said. I said this. There's limited seating available. I didn't make it up. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, enter in by the narrow gate, because wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. This is the word, these are words of Jesus. Jesus is saying, there's only one way to come. By the way, I am that way, he said. I am the way, the truth, and life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. What about other religions? You're lost. What about other religious groups and gurus and enlightened ones? Lost. What about other uh, religious books and holy books? Lies. There's only one covering the story from the beginning to the end forever. Limited seating The Bible says many are called, few are chosen. That means in God's 
in God's foreknowledge, he knows those, when the invitation goes out to accept, he knows those who will accept, and he knows those who will reject. Based on his foreknowledge, he knows by predestination. That when the opportunity goes to you and you say, I can't accept Jesus. I'm really, I'm dating this hot guy right now. I mean, he might dump me. What's his name? Bill. Bill is Lord. What's, what's her name? I always say Susie, and so people write me and say, you always say Susie. <laughs> I don't know why, but I can't accept Jesus. Susie's really amazing. Lord Susie. She pulls the strings. He's the puppeteer. Susie and Bill will not be there to hold your hand at that moment. Secondly, reservations are required. <laughs> Seating's limited. Reservations are required. Okay, this is going to create a riot. I'm going to just be, just to tell it like it is. Many of you have come from a church background where you haven't listened to a word I've said today because you don't have to. Because you get to play and do whatever you want to do and then run back quickly and get confession. And if that doesn't work in time, if you get killed on your way to confession, a priest can run over there and give you your last rites. And if that doesn't work and you wind up in purgatory, don't worry about it. You can get out. You know who invented that stuff? Man. That's not in the Bible. Anywhere is it in the Bible. And here's the deal. The Bible says it's appointed to every human, every human being wants to die and then comes their judgment. There's no second chance after death. She wait a minute, Pastor, are you kidding me? I thought I could sleep with bubbles and go out and do this with Rocky and then wind up going to heaven eventually. I mean, I've waited out at the price. I'm going to do it. Mm. You better watch it. There's no second chance after you're dead. You go straight into eternity, one way or the other, up or down, smoking or non-smoking. <laughs> but you have to have a reservation. Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Yes. And then finally we end right here. You need to act now. I supply last. <laughs> this sounds like a commercial. Well, I'm not selling you anything. But this is true. You know why it's true? Act now while supplies last. Supply is time. You better act now while you have the time. Because you ain't going to have the time. Well, listen, the things that we just walked you through, doesn't it make sense? Your seating, it matters to you. Reservations, that matters to you. And what's available, that matters to you. Listen, while you're living and while you can hear me right now, heaven is available to you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father but through me. Jesus is your ticket. He's the one that has forgiven us our sins at the cross, and that's why we need to trust him. That is the response to his generous offer. He died for you, my friend, but it takes the fact that you need to acknowledge him as Lord and Savior. Jesus saves, but are you willing to be saved? God will never violate your own will. He's a perfect gentleman. If you don't want to go to heaven, then he'll let you make that decision. But if you do want to go to heaven, Jesus is the way. Let's pray together right now. Father, we ask you that if there's anyone right now in this audience that would say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, Jesus, thank you for dying for me at the cross. Yes, Jesus, thank you for having been risen from the dead for my justification. Yes, Jesus, I receive you into my heart as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, then we want to hear from you. You can certainly go to jackhibbs.com to find out more and how you can connect with us. But I want to remind all of you that our featured book, Heaven by Randy Alcorn. This book, as I've said before, is so powerful that I want to make you this offer that if you get this book for a gift of any amount and you read this book, if it doesn't minister to you, if it doesn't open your eyes to the reality of heaven from the Bible, then listen, you send the book back and we'll give you your money back. That's how powerful this book is and that's how much I believe in it. So listen, until next time, 
You can visit much more and see more teachings at jackhibbs.com. But God bless you, and we'll see you right back here next time. Life is short, and that often makes us question, what happens after I die? What is waiting for me on the other side? If you've ever wondered, is heaven really real? Then Dr. Randy Alcorn's book, Heaven, has the answers you're looking for. Biblically sound and easy to understand, it will open your eyes to see your future home in an exciting new way. With these real life questions, his insights will challenge your thinking as he looks at such topics as, what will I be doing in heaven? Won't it get boring after a while? What will I eat in there? Are there animals in heaven? And what will it be like to see God? Randy Alcorn breaks it all down in easy to read, simple and understandable terms. Order now your copy of Heaven for a gift of any amount. Go to jackhibbs.com and all the information is right there or call 877-777-2346. Heaven, make sure it's your eternal destination. Then discover what God has in store for you. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effect. So I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles, open them up, and get ready to learn from God's Word. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. But I think you're going to get a lot out of it, and one of the great reasons You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? By the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to get excited about what Jesus Christ wants to do in and through you. Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing Simply go to jackhibbs.com. And there you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs. Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life. The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life.